Silent Hill has brought us some of the most disturbing and terrifying monsters throughout the series. Considering that most of the creatures of the franchise are usually manifested by nightmares and traumas, this really shouldn't come too much of a surprise. Yet it's the bosses of Silent Hill that really surprises us with how far the games are willing to go in order to make us feel uncomfortable when facing off against the next big bad. So in today's episode, I'm taking a look at the most disturbing boss fights of the franchise. Which boss fights really make us squirm and regret ever playing through the many stories of Silent Hill the most. Before that though, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel if you like the content that I bring you guys. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. Oh, and one final thing, because of today's topic, I feel like I need to give you guys a quick trigger warning as we'll be diving down into some deeply disturbing storylines hidden in the Silent Hill games. So you've been warned. But with that out of the way, this is Nerd Space Games with my top 10 most disturbing boss fights of Silent Hill. Let's get it. Number 10, Sad Daddy, Silent Hill Origins. Silent Hill Origins is arguably the best Western developed Silent Hill game that came after Silent Hill 4 The Room. A part of that comes from the unique monsters that Origins brings into the Silent Hill universe. One of the more disturbing monsters of the game though is none other than the otherworld manifestation of Travis's father, Sad Daddy. When Travis was a kid, his mother attempted to kill both Travis and herself. Thankfully, she was stopped and sent to Cedar Grove, a mental hospital. Because of how bad she'd become, Richard, Travis's father, lied to his son about her by saying that she died. The guilt of lying to Travis and the condition of his wife pushed Richard over the edge to the point where he killed himself in a motel room while Travis was in the arcade. When Travis came back, he found his dad's body. For one reason or another, Travis chose to believe that his dad was just sleeping and ended up staying in that same room for a whole 10 hours with his body until the manager found him. The otherworld manifestation of Richard took a lot of inspiration from why Richard killed himself and how he did it, with a disgusting looking monster that was suspended in the air with a piece of flesh on each side of it symbolizing Richard's guilt over both Travis and his mother gave it a horrifying image for the player to face. Plus, because Richard hung himself, you'll find Sad Daddy using tentacles attempting to choke Travis, which related to how he died. Overall, this monster isn't as disturbing as other monsters on this list, in look or in backstory, but it at least deserves a shout out due to the setup leading to Travis's confrontation with it. Considering it all started with a flashback scene of Travis finding his father dead and even had his father's lifeless corpse talk back to Travis, it felt disturbing enough to at least include it at the bottom of today's list. Number 9, Pyramid Head, Silent Hill 2. Despite being the most iconic monster of Silent Hill, Pyramid Head still finds himself near the bottom of this list for most disturbing monsters of the franchise. While the background surrounding his creation is pretty grim and fucked up, when you compare him to most of the bosses on this list, you start to realize that he isn't nowhere near as bad as some of the rest of the monsters you deal with in Silent Hill. Going back to Pyramid Head, his look alone adds a level of uneasiness as you're not able to see his face and then when you combine that with both his giant ass sword and his physique, then it's not too difficult to realize why he terrifies so many players. However, it's what Pyramid Head does throughout the game and the purpose that he serves that earns him a spot on this list. Spoilers for those that haven't played Silent Hill 2, but Pyramid Head is essentially a manifestation of James's guilt of killing his wife. For this reason, throughout the game you'll find Pyramid Head constantly killing Maria, someone who resembles Mary, in an effort to force James to face the truth. On top of that, in the first few encounters with Pyramid Head, we find him molesting and brutally murdering enemies throughout the apartment building. While not officially confirmed, these encounters are a manifestation of James's sexual frustration that he had when dealing with Mary's condition for three years. Between the disturbing look of Pyramid Head, the story behind his creation, and the acts that Pyramid Head commits throughout Silent Hill 2, we find him cracking the bottom part of today's list for most disturbing boss fights of Silent Hill. Number 8, Splitworm, Silent Hill 3. In the first official boss fight of Silent Hill 3, Heather finds herself face to face against a giant worm-like creature known as the Splitworm. The look of this creature alone is enough to warrant it a spot on this list as it takes the form of a giant snake-like creature in which its head opens up to reveal giant human-like teeth that almost reminds me of the Xenomorph's design in the Alien movies. But 
Naruto's split worm isn't only disturbing in the way it looks, but also what it symbolizes. While the manifestation of it is probably due to Alessa's fear of worms and bugs, part of its manifestation seems to also hint at it symbolizing Heather's fear for intercourse. Perhaps because of the fact that she's destined to be the mother of God, Heather probably has a fear of sexual intercourse, which then adds inspiration behind the creation of the split worm, since Heather is essentially a lesser reborn. Since it continues to enter and exit through multiple cavities throughout the battle area, plus the design of the creature itself, it's not too far-fetched to believe that this is the symbolism behind the creature. And considering how Silent Hill loves creating symbolic meanings behind the manifestation of every monster in the franchise, then it would make perfect sense for the split worm to be connected to those fears. So between the creature design and the extremely disturbing symbolic meanings that the monster has, it definitely earns its spot on this list. Number 7, Incubus, Silent Hill. We go back to the original game where at the end of the story we find that Dahlia has reunited both halves of Alessa's soul. Depending on which ending you've opted to go for, a demonic, like creature will soar out of her body. This creature is known as the Incubus. This demonic beast flies around the battle area and essentially looks like the devil itself. Considering that this creature is born from Alessa and Cheryl, Harry's adoptive daughter, the existence of this beast alone is pretty disturbing. For the record, it exists because of Dahlia forcing her own daughter to become the mother of God, which by the way, she started to force upon her daughter when she was only 7 years old. Anyway, while the backstory surrounding this creature is pretty messed up, the battle itself is actually even more disturbing. The music throughout this fight is meant to give off an unnerving feeling throughout the entire encounter, and the squeals that the Incubus makes throughout the fight is actually pretty horrifying. Actually, the sound that the Incubus makes is made from the distorting of the sounds that come from a dentist throw. So next time you're in for a checkup at your local dentist, I'm sure this terrifying and disturbing demon-like creature will pop up in your head. You're welcome. Number 6, Conjured Creature, Silent Hill 4 The Room. Silent Hill 4 The Room features one of the best villains of the entire franchise, Walter Sullivan. Basically a serial killer, Walter Sullivan is looking to murder 21 people in order to complete a ritual that'll reunite him with his mother in Room 302. So it shouldn't really surprise anyone to find out that Walter Sullivan is in fact the final boss of the game. However, just like every final boss fight of Silent Hill, you're not only facing his human form, but actually an otherworld recreation of him. In this case, you'll have to take on the conjured creature alongside the ghost of Walter Sullivan. This creature is just disgusting from head to waist as you're only able to see the upper half of his body. The creature is basically a recreation of Walter's dead body in room 302. However, unlike his body, we see the creature attached to what appears to be umbilical cords. This makes even more sense when you think about how the final battlefield takes place under room 302 and Walter believes that room 302 is his mother. Therefore, these umbilical cords are technically connected to room 302, which makes things even weirder. Also, in order to defeat Walter Sullivan, you must impale the conjured creature with eight spears, which rest inside eight of Walter's victims. To make things more disturbing, you actually have to summon these spears by showing the beast Walter's actual umbilical cord that, for one reason or another, was kept by the superintendent of the apartment building. Don't ask, because I don't know. Number 5, Nora, Silent Hill Homecoming. Before I continue on with the rest of this list, you should know that from this point on, things get really disturbing. And when I mean disturbing, I mean some really fucked up shit. Anyway, as much hate as Silent Hill Homecoming gets, there's one thing that the game did better than every other game of the franchise. Creating the most disturbing story that led to some of the most disturbing boss fights throughout the franchise. Considering that just about every boss fight of the game is based off of how a child was murdered, it shouldn't surprise any of you that's played Homecoming to see multiple entries from this game alone. Take Nora for example. I have two words for you. Human Centipede. And yes, I mean that same disgusting abomination created in the movie by the same name. Well, Silent Hill Homecoming takes inspiration from that in the creation of Nora's otherworld manifestation. See, Nora was murdered by her mother, Judge Holloway. Her death was by strangulation, so her otherworld's manifestation is based off of that idea that she was being held down by hands all over that prevented her from breathing. Hence why we find the monster form of Nora is seen covering her mouth with one set of hands. The rest of the inspiration comes from Nora's love for Alice in Wonderland as it was her favorite book. And in that book, her favorite character was, of course, well, I'm sure you can guess it. 
So essentially, her manifestation was created from both her favorite storybook character and the way she was murdered. On top of that, she makes a very disturbing entrance as she drags Wheeler into the walls and then exits out of a flesh opening of some kind. Even the death of the creature is kind of awful, as Alex destroys it by pulling her hands from her mouth to force the creature to breathe, therefore killing the creature with something that was the mirror opposite of how Nora was killed by her mother. Tragic and disturbing to say the least. And get this, we're only at number 5 right now guys. Number 4, Scarlet, Silent Hill Homecoming. So let's go back to back with disturbing Silent Hill Homecoming boss fights, but this time we take a look at Scarlet. So while Scarlet may not be the most disturbing boss fight of the game, she's easily the scariest thanks to her creature design. Similar to how Nora takes inspiration from both her death and her passion, Scarlet does the very same. Scarlet was murdered by her father by way of dismemberment. So, since Scarlet was killed by having pieces of her ripped away by her father, Alex must do the very same thing in order to defeat her. Before he can actually deal any major damage to Scarlet, he must first remove the armor she's wearing on each limb. After doing so, Scarlet will enter her second phase, which takes inspiration from Alex's guilt over Joshua by bringing in Joshua's love for spiders. Outside of it being the inspiration for how Alex must kill Scarlet, the amount of blood throughout the fight is also a symbol of how she died. Considering that her death was probably the most brutal of the children that were sacrificed, it makes sense for there to be a lot of blood around the battlefield. More specifically, we see Scarlet rise and fall in a pool of blood at the start and the end of the battle. Plus, upon removing her armor, we see streaks of blood that probably symbolizes either her father cutting himself in self-punishment for what he did, or the fact that she was cut into pieces. The final trait that you'll notice, and probably the scariest, is the connection that Scarlet has to dolls. Scarlet's room was full of different porcelain dolls, and the monster's form was clearly influenced by Scarlet's love for dolls. As a matter of fact, Scarlet's monster form is completely covered in porcelain armor that cracks as Alex breaks it to weaken her. The porcelain cosmetics on Scarlet easily makes her one of the scariest enemies of Silent Hill, and when you combine that with her disturbing backstory, then it's no wonder why she makes it this far up on this list. Number 3, The God. Silent Hill 3. From looks alone, the Order's god that Heather faces at the end of Silent Hill 3 is probably the most unnerving creature of the franchise. Something about its ghoulish look that resembles an abomination created from aspects of Alessa, the Incubus, and the Incubator, the god before Heather is seriously one of nightmares that'll stick with me until the day I die. Because of the hastiness of how this god was born and the hatred behind its creation, we get a half-completed and damaged version of god. The face of the creature is cracked, similar to that of a broken doll face, and half of the body is missing flesh, exposing the skeleton of the creature from waist down. Apparently, this is due to how God was born this time around. Prior to the fight, Heather literally threw up God, and I mean, seriously, she vomited out a fucking fetus that was God. Then, Claudia, being the crazy psycho that she is, ate the fetus and gave birth to God herself. Yeah, I can't make any of this up. Because of this, God was not born complete, hence why we got a half-baked monstrosity instead. Between all of the circumstances behind creating this monster, the creature design of God itself, and also the fact that the battlefield is literally within a uterus all play a part as to why God in Silent Hill 3 is one of the most disturbing boss fights of the franchise. Number 2, Amnian, Silent Hill Homecoming. And we're back with yet another disturbing boss fight from Silent Hill Homecoming, but this time we take a look at the worst of them all from Silent Hill Homecoming, the Amnian. Following the trend of each of the bosses being manifestations of how a child died, Amnian is the final boss and the manifestation of Alex's brother, Joshua. What makes Amnian different from most monsters on this list comes down to the design itself. See, the backstory of Amnion isn't as disturbing as some of the other monsters in Silent Hill Homecoming as it's pretty much the manifestation of Alex's guilt of causing Joshua's accident. However, unlike the rest of the children in the game, Joshua wasn't murdered. It was an accident. So there wasn't as much of a disturbing backstory compared to the other boss fights of the game. But that doesn't change the fact that Amnion is, without a doubt, one of the most disturbing monster designs of the franchise. Amnion appears to have the body of a pregnant woman. This is proven to be the case because after the fight has ended, you learn that Joshua's body is hidden inside of her. 
The woman-like figure also has no human limbs, but instead has mechanical spider-like arms coming from the ribs of the creature. Yet the most disturbing feature on Amnion is the fact that she has an umbilical cord connected to her mouth, which appears to be feeding Joshua some type of dark liquid, I think. Most of the inspiration for this manifestation comes from traits surrounding Joshua, of course. The spider-like limbs comes from Joshua's love for spiders. The camera lens-like neck feature comes from Joshua's photography passion. And the idea that the monster carries Joshua in her womb, even at his age, probably relates to how Alex believed his parents babied Joshua, and it was one of the last things that he said to his brother before he died. Number 1. Abstract Daddy, Silent Hill 2 Amnion might be the most disturbing looking creature in the Silent Hill franchise, but Abstract Daddy is both disturbing to look at and is the manifestation of something even more awful. Technically, Abstract Daddy becomes a regular enemy seen in the hotel section of Silent Hill 2, but before that, James comes face to face with it in a boss fight to save Angela. As it turns out, Abstract Daddy is a manifestation of Angela's trauma instead of James's, which up until now, most of the creatures have been created from James's mind. Abstract Daddy comes from the sexual abuse that Angela has suffered from both her father and her brother, two people that she should have been able to trust. The creature design for Abstract Daddy points to this more as it appears to be two figures in a reclined sexual position. Learning of Angela's past and realizing what this creature symbolizes is one of the most disturbing moments of any Silent Hill game. To make matters worse, we're probably seeing a relatively tamed version of what Angela is seeing considering that we're only looking at it from James's perspective while playing Silent Hill 2. Meaning the monster before Angela in this fight is probably even more disturbing than what we got. And then when you add in the fact that the room that this fight takes place in is easily one of the most disturbing locations thanks to the holes around the room being penetrated with some foreign type object then it's no wonder why Abstract Daddy is viewed as one of if not the most disturbing boss fight of Silent Hill. But that does it for today's episode of Nerd Space Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think about my number one choice. Is Abstract Daddy the most disturbing boss fight of Silent Hill or is there another one that deserves that title? Also while you're at it, let me know of any boss fights that I miss and that you believe deserves a spot somewhere on this list. Anyway, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more rankings like this one. Also leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. But as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerd Space Games. Take care.